Hello everyone, welcome. Um, we're here at the SME Finance Forum in Mumbai and we're just about to conclude day two of this very exciting program. And I'm very excited to have Sandy with me. Sandy, thank you very much for, for joining me here to, uh, Great to this be afternoon. With you. Thank you, Hans. And um, uh, before I'm going to ask about your experiences with, with day two, um, you have a very impressive company, C2FO. And maybe for the audience who couldn't be here today these days, maybe explain a little bit about what the company does. It's a very simple company. We match accounts payable and accounts receivable in a marketplace that enables those with accounts receivable to be paid early by their customers at a slight discount, which frees up this year almost $100 billion of funding for suppliers to corporations who wouldn't have that funding were it not for this platform. We've been in operation for almost 12 years now. Uh, we operate in, gosh, 170 countries, and we have... Uh, We've been very fortunate, and we've had great friends like you who have helped us uh, develop in nations we might not have gone to, and uh, we're very grateful for that support. Wow, fantastic. That's a very impressive uh, uh, track goal. record. You have, you have a goal. Your organization has a goal of getting to $100 billion in funding by 2030. We're trying to get to a trillion dollars of funding by 2030, and if we do that, then I think together we'll be able to really do something extraordinary for the world to come. Then we can make impact. Huh? Then we can so. really yeah. make impact. Yeah. Wow, That'd be great. very impressive. Um, yeah, we're about to conclude day two of the uh, of the annual conference. Mm. We'll just give you an impression of, of what you've seen over the past two days. Though we've been a member for, as you said, many years, uh, this is the first time I've come to the conference. So I was blown away at the quality of the speakers, the seniority, and the level of thinking. So it's it's very clear that if you are interested in SME finance, if you're interested in, in being part of this global uh, opportunity to change things for small businesses, this is the place to be. Yeah. So I, after I was, you were kind enough to have me speak at a few of these uh, yeah. events, and, and the number of people that came up with great ideas and collaboration and partnership, it's, uh, this is, this, I won't miss this one again. And of course, we had our other team coming before, but now I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm demanding that I come to these because it's been such a great meeting. Yeah, oh, fa that's fantastic to hear. And, uh, and I agree with you. I think that there, there's a great diversity in topics. I think we have people from, from 70 countries here. Mm -hmm. So also, I think on the networking side, uh, yeah. we try to leave, yeah, yeah. Uh, leave space for that. And, and, and of course, it's all for the greater good because I think SMEs, the world over, are still so much you know, deprived of, yeah. of, of funding and of credit. So anything we can do to support that um, uh, helps. And of course, digitization is a big topic uh, uh, these days. Well, it's one of the ways we can help the SMEs. The infrastructure that's been built in the past was not geared nor cost effective for small business acquisition as a financing entity. So I think as we create more digitization, more transparency of data, it's only natural that more capital will flow to small businesses because that's been an opaque market. As we open that up with more transparency, the platforms that we operate, the work that you do, the others that are at this event, I mean, the idea is very simple. Right? If we bring more clarity and more transparency and more opportunity uh, at lower cost acquisition through digital platforms, you're going to see more financial institutions being able to provide capital with your help and our help yeah. to those businesses. And as you point out, what, 65% of the world's GDP or, and employment is small business? Yeah. And if we're not serving them, how do we expect the globe, the world to be a better place? Yeah. It, it just won't be achieved if we don't take care of the needs. Yeah. Now, I know you, you, I think you started in the United States, right, with mm -hmm. a company. Yeah. Uh, we're here in India, in Mumbai uh, these days. So, so and, and I know the digital landscape in India five years ago was completely different yeah. to what it is yeah. today. So maybe your thoughts on, on, on the digitization uh, journey that India is on. Well, I think in many ways, they're, they're, uh, you know, G20 was here, you're here. In many ways, India's led the market in UPI, account aggregation, open and transparent platforms, TREDS, which yeah. is a fantastic working capital platform. That Credit we're bureaus. Yeah. Yeah, well, and TREDS, which we're, we're, we're honored to be part of. I think, again, many ways setting, setting the stage and setting the tone for what other nations can do. So important to India, right? If you, if you look at the impediments to growth for small and mid-sized business, the number one thing they cite is access to capital. For every $1 million that, that, as you and I know quite well, for every $1 million you put into the hands of a small business, that would otherwise not have it. So another million of financing, another million of early payment, 16.3 jobs are created. India has to create 100 million jobs by 2030, and there's no way they're going to do that if they can't free up capital for the small businesses who are the number one employer of people in the, in the economy of India. Yeah, yeah. Now you are big in working capital finance, yeah, yeah. right? Um, 
we always like it when you know we can cater to specific niche groups, right? Underserved, mm. Mm. maybe women-led businesses, yeah. Yeah. hugely important for us. Yes. Or um, businesses in rural areas that, that normally, you know, there's no bank branches. They're very, very hard for them to get capital. Yeah. Uh, uh, C2FO, how, how do you look at those, those niche markets? Super important. I wouldn't consider them niche, right? Yeah. I mean, some people think small business is niche, but we just decided that it's, 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 more, than, it's, more, it's more than half of the, of the world's economy. Uh, when, and I did, we did some work we did some work with the Federal Reserve and, and the U.S. Treasury a few years ago during the pandemic. And during this analysis, we realized that women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, LGBTQIA businesses, diverse businesses used our platform two to three times more than their majority male uh, peer group. And why was that? Well, I, I, think, I think it's because, and I, I don't mean to be so blunt about this, but I guess I, I will, uh, Financial institutions want to do the right thing, but they're, the financial systems are reflective of the prejudice and bias that exist in society. So as long as we have bias in society, we're going to see that reflected in the financial system. Small businesses fail more rapidly than large businesses. Sadly, women-owned businesses fail more than male-owned businesses, not because they're not better. In fact, I would make an argument that a minority biz or a woman-owned biz has already shown more grit to be where they are. So by yeah, my definition, yeah, they're yeah. greater entrepreneurs but it's harder for them in, in a majority world that does not treat them as well as they should be treated. So uh, until we eliminate risk underwriting and the provisioning of capital, we're always going to have bias in the financial system. And one of the things that we do is that 100 billion of funding that we're providing, the 8 billion of that to businesses in developing nations, so 7 to 8 billion of our 100, 7 to 8 percent of our budget in developing nations. And that, we're, we're doing that without them having to go to a bank. We're doing that by just giving them the capacity to be paid early on their accounts receivable. With one click, they're able to accelerate payment. That, there is no underwriting. Yeah. So we've done 300, well, you know this, we've done 300 billion of funding in the last 10 years, 100 billion this last year, so we're growing nicely, and we've never had a credit loss because there's no credit involved. It's just early delivery of cash flow yeah. at the price that works for that supplier, for that business to name their rate for their cash flow. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. Coming back to the forum, eh? so we have the annual conference where we are not today, but of course the SME Finance Forum has many different events, mm. uh, communities of practice, uh, knowledge, bases. Anything that you feel we should add or we could, or, or we could do less of? Or? I, you, I'm, uh, I'm very reluctant to offer advice to this group. It, you, there's, the only thing I would add is why only a hundred billion for your goal by 2030? Why don't you up yeah. it a little bit and uh, let's let's see if we can't get to 200 billion? Yeah, yeah, and no, I, yeah. No, I, I, I just more more execution and, and more funding. We know what we know what the world's delta is. We know what the vacuum of funding for small business is, and it is on on order of. We say. The official numbers are six trillion of yeah. gap for small business, but that's based on final value of goods and services, final GDP. It's not the final, it's the total economic output that we have to look at, which is usually twice the GDP. So the funding gap, we think, for small and mid-sized biz globally is more like twelve trillion dollars. Yeah. Right, so you know, if we're lucky enough to get to a trillion and you're lucky enough to get to a half a trillion by twenty thirty, we're still only gonna scratch ten percent of the need. Yeah. So yeah. there needs to be more funding, more feet on the street, more growth more transparency, more digital transformation, all the things that we've already articulated. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, uh, apart from the volumes of that, that are needed, I think we should also uh, need, to, need to look at where it lands, right? Because mm. um, it's really about the impact and not so much of pushing volumes out the door because yeah, that's yeah, easy, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we have to really focus much, and, and also from the, the IFC and World Bank perspective, where do these funds eventually land? Yeah. And that's... Well, you, you do a lot of, of infrastructure, and we were talking about the funding mechanisms you have in place. I think just as, just as important as the physical infrastructure is digital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And here we'll talk our book a little bit. Digital infrastructure to create networks for the flow of capital where you have network effect where, where someone can come to the platform and order cash from each one of their customers simultaneously. That network effect is almost like setting up a telecommunications network instead mm -hmm. of searching for data on Google or searching for your, your, your companion you want to call, you're searching for capital. And if we have all the capital we can possibly put on that network and we've got multiple of their customers and we've built these networks together, and maybe, maybe IFC and C2FO will build more networks together, then I think we can't help 
would become doubly effective because that network effect will, will impact the ability for the small business to draw down capital from multiple buyers simultaneously and for the buyers to fund multiple suppliers simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah eliminating a lot of the one-off process that happens when we go through the traditional financial system. Yeah, yeah. We talked about India. Um, you are mentioned you operate in, uh, in, in multiple countries, right? Mm -hmm. so, so if you look at the emerging markets, what are, what, besides India, what are other markets that you really want to grow in and advance? I'm tempted to say every, <laughs> the new movie that came out, everything, all, everywhere, yeah. all at once. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a little tempting to say, I want to be everywhere. Let's imagine everywhere, there are limitations the on staff and budgets. <laughs> and, uh. Uh, we, we tend to go to, we tend to have most success where the financial systems are most broken. Okay. And, and where those systems are most broken and there's a fair sized GDP. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't operate in a very small GDP nation. It just takes a little bit longer mm. to get the marketplace up. So we tend to go to broken financial systems, or at least those that are needing to be kind of transformed a bit, where there are also concentrated large buyers with very diverse and large supply sets. Yeah. That, that's a perfect market for us. It could be Egypt, it could be Morocco, it could be the Ukraine, it could be Turkey, uh, but, but generally larger GDPs with large corporations, with big supply chains, tend to be the places where we have the most success ramping quickly. Yeah, yeah. India's been a perfect example of that. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, coming to the end of the interview, because I know you're a busy man and we have uh, some other programs. Uh, You've got more interviews. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, we have uh, the award ceremony to go to this evening. Maybe some final thoughts from your side, Sandy, but before we close. I think the theme that I heard from all of the presenters was interoperation, collaboration, more transparency. So I've heard from at least here, I've heard from more than a hundred organizations that are doing things to solve funding need for small and mid-sized businesses. I do believe that together, if we can create interoperability across all of these individual nodes, I think we're going to be much more successful than if we try to solve it individual node by node by node. So yeah. as is coming back to this thesis of network, it's not, it's not the number of nodes, that's very powerful, but it's the connectivity of those nodes that makes the network. So we don't want to build things in isolation. We need to build things in collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a perfect uh, closing remark, Sandy. Thank you very much for taking Cheers. the time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for doing a, this. And have a great rest of the conference. It's already been wonderful. Thank you. Thanks.